Have you ever wondered how we make predictions or draw conclusions about large groups of data without actually considering every single piece of it? Well, that's where sampling comes in. Consider a scenario where you're conducting a survey to find out how people feel about a new product and your target audience is everyone in the country. Collecting responses from every single person would be time-consuming, expensive, and nearly impossible. Instead, you take a smaller, manageable group called a sample and use their responses to represent the larger group or population. This is the essence of sampling. It allows us to work smarter. The population is the entire group you're interested in, like all the students in a school or all the customers of a company. This sample is the subset of that population that you actually study. For example, if the population is all students in a university, the sample might be 100 randomly selected students. If chosen carefully, this sample can tell us a lot about the entire population. In machine learning, we often work with massive data sets. Analyzing the entire data set can be computationally expensive, so we use sampling techniques to pick smaller representative subsets. These samples help train models efficiently while still achieving good performance. Think of sampling like checking the quality of a batch of chocolates in a factory. Now you don't need to taste every single chocolate to know if the batch is good. Instead, you take a few chocolates from different parts of the batch. This small selection represents the whole. If those samples taste great, chances are the rest of the batch does too. Sampling works the same way in machine learning. It helps us draw conclusions about a large population by analyzing just the subset, saving time and effort while ensuring accuracy. In this video, we'll explore the various sampling techniques and how to choose the right one for your machine learning projects. So without wasting any time, let's dive in. So basically, there are two types of sampling techniques in machine learning. First one is bias sampling. Now, bias sampling basically happens when you pick a group of people in such a way that does not exactly represent the complete picture, right? So what exactly is bias sampling? So say for example, you're trying to uh, find out how students feel about school lunches, but you only ask the kids who sit at the same table as you. Now this is an example of a bias sampling because you did not ask various students like, like different sections or uh, students from the other states, right? Who would have a different taste as compared to your friend group. Or say, for example, you're conducting a survey to understand how people feel about public transportation in your city. So instead of asking people who regularly use buses or trains, you have to make sure to ask a wide range of people like students, office workers, stay-at-home parents, and even people who don't use public transport, right? But if you ask only a particular group of people like people who take the bus every day, your result or your survey, your sample would be biased, right? So we have two types of bias sampling methods. First one is convenience sampling. Now convenience sampling is when you gather data from people or things that are easy to reach. So it's simple and quick, but it's often not very accurate because it does not represent the entire population, right? So in our previous example, where we were trying to gather the opinions of students about the school lunches, if we ask only the people sitting at our table, that would be an example of convenience sampling. Right, they are easy to reach and they're easy to get their opinions from. Right, the next one is voluntary sampling. Now, voluntary sampling is when you let people decide if they want to participate in a survey or study. So, instead of choosing who to ask, you wait for volunteers to step in. Now, the problem here is that you often end up hearing only from people who feel strongly about the topic, not everyone. Right, now, say for example, a company sends an email asking the customers to leave a review. Now, most of the customers who are going to reply to that email are either going to be really happy with the product or not satisfied at all with the product, right? The company is barely going to receive any average re reviews because, because these are the customers who are not going to bother responding. Now, voluntary sampling is easy to set up, but it can lead again to biased results because only certain kinds of people are going to participate. So in order to resolve the above issues and get rid of the bias in our sample, we need something known as unbiased sampling. Okay, this is our now this is our second technique of collecting samples. So unbiased sampling is when you pick a group of people or data in such a way that gives everyone an equal chance of being included. It's going to be fair, balanced, and it's going to help you get accurate results, right? Because here is where your sample represents the entire group you're trying to study, okay? So the first type of unbiased sampling is random sampling. 
This is where everyone has an equal chance of being selected. You can also relate random sampling with say drawing names out of a hat. So in a previous example where we were trying to find out the opinions of students about school lunches, instead of asking people at our table itself, we randomly go and ask people at different tables. Right? So this would give everyone an equal chance of being selected. So random sampling helps avoid bias and it gives you more accurate results because it does not really favor any specific group, right? Then the next sampling method is systematic sampling. Now systematic sampling is a way of picking people or item for your data in a regular step-by-step -step pattern. So previously we were choosing people randomly. Over here we are going to select every nth person or item from a list or group. Okay, so say for example, I ask every uh, third person I meet about their opinion for school lunches, right? So systematic sampling is going to be simple and quick and it ensures that you get a spread of data without asking or testing every single person or item. However, there's one drawback in systematic sampling. Say if there's a hidden pattern in the group, for example, every fifth light bulb being faulty. Now this could accidentally skew your results. Right. So moving on to the next technique that is stratified sampling. Now stratified sampling is a method where you divide a group into smaller groups or you can also call them strata based on say shared characteristics or different behavior and then take a sample from each group randomly. Right. Now I have created three strata or so three groups over here and now out of these three groups I randomly select people or randomly select my data. Right. So, so this is what my final sample is going to look like. Now this helps ensure that all the groups are fairly represented in your data. Right. So say for example, you're serving students in a school and you want to include opinions from every grade level. Now you're going to divide students into groups based on their grades. So say for example, my stratum 1 represents my grade 1 students. Then my stratum 2 represents my grade 2 students, stratum 3 represents my grade 3 students and so on. Now out of these 3 stratas, I am going to randomly select a few students from each grade. This way every grade is going to have an equal say in my survey. So stratified sampling ensures that your data reflects all parts of the population, making your results more balanced and accurate. Then the next technique is cluster sampling. Now cluster sampling is when you divide a large group into smaller groups called clusters and then randomly pick a few clusters to study. Now instead of studying everyone, you're going to focus on just the selected clusters, which is going to make data collection faster and easier. So previously in stratified sampling, we were making stratas or groups out of our population and then we were randomly selecting people out of those stratas. Now over here in cluster sampling, we are going to divide the population into different clusters and then we are going to randomly pick an entire cluster for our sample. Okay, so this is the basic difference between cluster sampling and stratified sampling. So basically instead of selecting students randomly from each grade, we are going to select a grade randomly which is going to be a cluster. Alright, so cluster sampling is going to save time and resource because we are focusing on specific groups but this might not be as accurate. Right, so this is one drawback of cluster sampling. So it is not going to be as accurate as some other methods if the clusters don't fully represent the entire population, right? So over here, as you can see, some of our grades are not going to be counted in a sample. So say this is my grade one, this is my grade two, my grade three, four, five, and six. Now over here, only my grade one, four, and six are going to be included in the sample. Whereas what are the opinions of my grade two, three, and five students? are never going to be included in the sample. So this is a basic problem with cluster sampling. However, the advantage is that it saves time and resources, right? So moving on to the next sampling method, which is multi-stage. Now multi-stage sampling is like breaking a big task into smaller steps to make it easier, right? So instead of randomly selecting your entire sample from a huge population all at once, what we are going to do is we are going to do it in stages. So each stage is going to narrow things down a bit more. So say for example, you want to survey students in all the schools in your city. Now the first stage would be you randomly pick a few schools from the city. Alright, so once you have randomly picked your schools, you move on to the second stage. Now from these selected schools, we are going to randomly pick a few classes. Alright, so say for example, I decide to only uh, consider my higher secondary classes that is 5th, 6th, maybe exclude the 7th grade and I go for 8th and 9th. Right. Then I move to my third stage. Now from these classes, we are going to randomly choose a few students to survey. Alright. So this is basically what multi-stage sampling looks like.
okay so by sampling in stages we are going to save time we are also going to save some efforts especially when we are dealing with large populations so it's like zooming in step by step to get the people you need so this is all for this video i hope you guys understood the various sampling methods and were able to get some sort of insight out of it if you guys liked it do hit the like button and subscribe to intellipath's youtube channel thank you and see you in the next video